H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Good evening, everybody. Does everybody hear me clearly? Okay, as usual, is my screen also visible? Okay, perfect. Yes, guys, good evening. And how's everyone doing today? Yes, doing good and great. Oh, yes, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for asking. <clears throat> okay, that's nice to know. So let's get going. Um, everybody good with the concept of your negative parameterization and your output values? Everybody good with it or anybody still having any questions or doubts? In because yesterday we have taken two topics inside the same uh, day. That's the reason because it was interrelated. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. All good, perfect. So no questions, no doubts on anything. That's nice, guys. Okay, then let's get going. So today's topic is by the name Object Repository. Okay, so see, so we have seen the concept of the Object Repository when we were looking into the into the object identification details, right? Okay, now one question. I cannot see global sheet data while running. You will have to click on the data while the running is on that's when you'll be able to see not before that okay got it okay let's get going yeah any more questions guys before i get started So when we say object repository, as we know, every tool has its own core functionality there, right? So when we say every tool has its own core functionality, this object repository also has its own core functionality, which lies inside record and playback, right? So when we say record and playback, record and replay, see, whenever we are recording any script on this tool, Guys, please give me a second here. Yes, guys, sorry about it. So, yes, whenever we are recording any script on this tool, the tool has the ability of capturing everything in the form of objects and properties, right? And are stored in a file by name object repository file so basically the objects that are captured during the record session are known as test objects similarly whenever we are replaying you could say running you could say or 
executing you could say so whenever we are replaying running or executing the script mm -hmm. <clears throat> the test objects from the object repository are compared with the runtime objects from the screen okay so wherever there is a perfect match we get to see a passed status else we see the failed status right so basically without the understanding of the objects and its properties the tool will not replay the script for us so this is what is the core functionality of your uft everything lies inside your objects and its properties which he is storing it in the object repository window right so when everything is getting stored inside the object repository mm -hmm, when we are trying to run the script right everything is compared wherever there is a perfect match we get to see the past status wherever there is no perfect match we get to see the failed status right so in those cases mm -hmm. yeah when we say it's it's something like it's comparing the details and and trying to give us a pass in the failed status mm -hmm. if there is no object and a property but whereas the object present on the script again he will fail or if there is object and property present behind the scenes on the object repository but on the screen if it is not present again it is going to fail either way where it is not matching he would end up giving it as a fail status for us right so without the understanding of the objects and its properties yes the tool will not replay the script for us yes getting the point everyone so see here when we say object repositories okay object repositories are of two types okay one question so it is comparing the expected to the actual right no so you cannot say comparing the expected to the actual say in a layman way that to in on extremely different side you can take it as your understanding if that sits perfectly but this is not the right way of because see this is not something where we are holding on to the expected and this is what is actual no we are taking the script right by recording it and then we are replaying right trying to catch the point it is not like this is what we are putting down this is what the application is giving it to us that's not what it is we already got the application we are recording it now we are replaying so we cannot say it as a actual and the expected that he is comparing that would not fit the priority and the criteria correctly okay got me as well so when we say object repository yes these are of two types one of them or the first one is known as local or per action object repository the second one is known as shared object repository so when you say local or per action object repository this is limited to its own tool unless if it has been yes created as a shared object repository the file extension used here is dot bdb where bdb stands for berkeley database whereas when you say shared object repository okay next question so any missing object will divide it will derive to run failure yeah of course obviously i mean the object is not present he is going to give you the fail status mm -hmm. now when we say shared object repository yes once created from 
the local object repository it can be shared whenever and wherever required and the file extension used here is a dot tsr so when you say tsr yes tsr stands for test shared a repository so when we say your local or per action or when we say shared object repository yes these object repositories have their own way of working and their own way of functioning so by default whenever we create any test okay every test comes with its own action and this action has its own local object repository okay so whatever we would be recording inside this action all those objects and the properties will be going inside this object repository here yes getting the point everyone so say i'll be doing something here on my system mm -hmm. and after that i'll ask a question so think wisely and then give me the answer for it so let's see what needs to be done okay let's get going let me create a new test here so once when we opened up the test yes the test comes by default with its own action one see this is the name of my test right it comes for with its own action one and every action one comes with its own local object repository <coughs> correct so now let's see what needs to be done i'll start off with my system util.run command followed by the folder structure so let me get started with the recording here okay so now we have this piece of code now what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy down this piece of code okay then i'll open up another test now in here i am going to paste this whole entire yeah. yeah so i am pasting the whole entire script here so now when i try to run how many of you will say this is going to run correctly and why how many of you will say this is not going to run correctly and why either way that you answer yes give me the justification for it yeah why do you think it will happen why do you think it won't happen okay now if the flight gui is open then it will run mm. this will not run as objects are not present in repository no because there is no script in object repository not run because object is missing it will fail it will fail because it was saved on different file name originally mm. this one will not run because it does not have action under 002 it will not because object will not match Okay, guys yes let's stick to the answers and let's see what's going to happen mm -hmm. let's try to run hmm. my script is failing at the very second line right it says the test and cannot continue due to an unrecoverable error and the login object was not found in the object repository so what exactly he says here without the understanding of the objects and its properties the tool will not replay the script for us <clears throat> right see the place where we have originally recorded that is the place where we have the objects and its properties kept inside the object repository but whereas here what is that we have done we just copied and pasted the piece of code correct so if i open up this object repository there are no objects and there are no properties associated with it so when he is opening up this application, when he is trying to see this, there are no objects present for this given application. There is nothing to get compared here. If there is nothing to get compared, obviously the script is going to fail. As it says, the object was not found inside the object repository. So without the understanding of the objects and its properties, the, yes, the script will not go ahead and, I mean, the tool will not go ahead and run the script for us. Yes, getting everyone, the ones who gave me the wrong answers. Yes, clear everyone. Why is that? Most of them gave me the correct answers, guys. Good job. Excellent. 
I have tried this scenario before it makes sense. Okay, that's nice as well. So everybody clear why is that the script will not run? So basically without the understanding of the objects and its properties, the tool will not be able to understand anything because it's core functionality. Okay, everything lies inside the object and its properties. So in those cases, can we not use the piece of code from one point to another point? Is it not possible? No, absolutely no. It is, yes, highly possible. So how is it possible? What we need to do is we have to create the shared object repository from wherever it's been created. That is wherever it's been recorded. From that particular test, we have to create a shared object repository and keep it someplace on the folder structure. So once it has been kept on the folder structure, from there I can come and associate it to this given test. So let's see how to do that. So where is my test? Where did I do the recording? Inside the object underscore 001. So let's open up that given test. Yes, this is where it is. I'll open up. Right. So this is where it is. So now inside this, this is my piece of code. But if I scoot down and if I scoot down and if I go to the object repository, if I double click and open up, yes, I should be able to see all the test objects and the properties associated with it. And this file, if you notice, comes with an extension of .bdb. Do you see here? BDB. Right. So now we have to make this as a shared object repository so that it can be used wherever and whenever it is required. So how do we do that? Inside your object repository, go to the file on the top and then say export local objects. Click here. He's going to ask you to go ahead and save it, create it in the form of an object repository because it only understands the .tsr file that is test shared repository. So try to keep the name similar to the name of your test to avoid the confusions. So I'll give the name here, object underscore 001. And I'll also give the extension that is dot TSR. And yes, then click on create. So immediately see your original repository is going to stay here itself, but the instance of it got created on the folder structure. So now that it got created, let's see how to associate it. Okay, now let's go and open up R002. So now this is where it is. We have made the piece of code, all right? But there are no objects and properties here. If I double click, there is nothing inside this object repository. I need to associate it, the shared object repository inside this test. So how do we do it? Go to resources here on the top and then select associate repositories. Okay, so he's asking what is the repository that you want to add here. So click on this green tab. So he's opening up the folder structure wherever the repository has been added. And then again, he accepts only the TSR uh, file extension. So the object repository that I happen to create was this one, object underscore double zero one dot TSR. Select it and then click on open. So now the folder structure got added for your object repository. Yes, this action one is the same. This action one is the same, this action one. So select your action one and then associate it with this given function. So move your arrow here and then yes, put it down inside your associated actions. Once this is done, click on okay. So immediately you'll see that the shared object repository got yes, added over here. So now when I try to run, yes, no problems, no issues. It would run without any yeah, issues. Yes, getting the point everyone. How is that you can reuse the piece of code from one place to another place in a very yeah, technical way of this given tool in extremely technical aspect of it. Till here it's clear to everyone. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll paste out the same piece of code two more times. Okay, so if I'm doing it two more times, do I have to go ahead and associate the object repository again 
If yes, why should I? If no, why shouldn't I?